hear that lovely whine? I believe that is my rear bearings speaking to me. Ordered a set of bearings off of Amazon this week and I'm going to go through yanking them out and dropping the new ones on there. Basically it's the whole hub assembly that goes on and in theory it's supposed to be really easy. Let's find out. Okay, I've got box, and we have here a pair of axle bearings for the 2011 Ford Taurus. I picked these up off Amazon, and they were pretty cheap. I think it was 85 bucks for the pair. We're going to open these up and see what they look like. It's your basic bearing. I was just in here the other day to change the brakes. You can see I've got some fairly new looking brakes in there. And when I was changing the brakes, I noticed the bearing, this one, back one, was a little noisy. Driving, it's hideously noisy. I just wasn't sure if it was my tires or something else. It is something else. jack stands so we can get the wheel bearing or the uh, wheel off now so just a quick overview here uh, in order to get this whole bearing unit out we have to remove the rotor which requires us to remove this guy. We also have to take the whole caliper off. There's a pair of 15 millimeter bolts on the back. You don't actually have to take the piston brake part out. I believe you can free it up just using the caliper. We're gonna try that first. Just real quick coming in here. We're talking this bolt here. You can get at it from underneath. There's room to get a wrench on there. So let's see if we can, we can do that. Fifteen millimeter socket. It kind of sticks out down there, and if you squeeze around, you can pull on it to get that off. Easier said than done, right? All right, we're gonna come in from up top with a bigger wrench. We'll fit in there. There it goes. These are a little tight, but it seems to be somewhat accessible. All right, one of two. And then looks like this is the second guy right here. Not much clearance to swing. Hmm, let me try a box wrench on that. All right, normally I would say just get in here with a screwdriver and pop the caliper. Um, I got a little bit of, of uh, build up on the disc. So I'm not going to be able to just slide it off. So I'm going to remove these 13 millimeter bolts on both sides of this caliper. One, two, I'm going to separate it and just pull the pads off. The, you're going to take the caliper off anyway to remove this. So I tried to do it short and just take it off in all one piece. That didn't work. So I'm going to pull it off in two pieces. So we're going to get in here with the 13 millimeter and remove that. Now, I just had these off the other day, so they're all lubed up. See, they pop right out pretty easy. The others, I don't think, have been out ever. It 
So now, get in here and carefully remove this part here. And we're just gonna set this aside. There's room for it to rest on this piece down here, so just set it there. Here's the pads, we're gonna take them out. And just slide out, set them aside. This piece now will just slide off. We'll set that aside. Now, we've got a exposed disc. And we're gonna get, we're gonna remove this sensor eventually. Let me get the disc off first. So we're gonna go after this, this Torx head next right there. Hey! I'm gonna drop a pole in between there and the ground so it won't turn. That works. There we go. Rod worked pretty good. You can see it's a metal rod. I just have it laying there. Keep that from turning, so that seemed to work good. Next, we're going to pound this guy off. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it didn't sound so good. All right, so now we're gonna come in here and get this sensor off just so when I pull the bearing, I don't hurt it. The, uh, it's a five, what is it, five sixteenths. I don't know what the metric for it is, but the five sixteenths fits really, really well. And it's tiny, so it's really easy to get out. Of course, I'm most of the way into the messy part of the job, and I decided to put gloves on. I should have done that to start. So there's that guy comes out, and then this should just wiggle out, and we'll put that out of the way. Just tuck it. Tuck it back like, like that. Okay, now, there are some big ones. I gotta get, I think they're, let me go check. There's four big bolts back here. One, one, two, one down there, three, and one over there, four. And they hold the bearing on so we got to get those guys out and one of them's a little tight so I had to get a flatter socket oh so before I do this I just realized something on the other side here these are the bolts that are coming through. I'm gonna wire brush those to and maybe spray some stuff on them to make sure they don't get stuck. I'm gonna use a little PB blaster penetrating goo. Great, I'm poke my eye out.
one. They're a little longer than I thought. Fourth one's annoying. You gotta kinda get it from the bottom. I am really glad I got this flexible head ratchet and I was looking at it I didn't think a normal ratchet would fit in there and I am right so you got to have the skinny flexi head ratchet all right so that's the four bolts now comes the fun part so I got from the local auto parts store they lease these they are uh, basically free. This one, I think it was a $150 deposit and they return it to you completely when you return the stuff back to them. AutoZone does that. That's who's near me. I'm sure other auto parts stores do that. The thing I needed in here was the slide hammer. Slide hammer and this thing that goes on the hub. And this piece here. The way it works. It sits Basically like that. You bolt it on and the slide hammer goes in that and you just yank it out. Now I've seen people say that you can beat it with a hammer and it will come out. And it looks like it's got a pretty deep flange. I didn't want to risk breaking anything. I figured I would use the tool and see what happens. Hey, that was pretty easy. Well, there appears to be a lot of crap in this flange area. I'm going to wire brush this whole thing out. And I also think I'm going to put a thin layer of uh, anti-seize in there. New bearing. Ready to go. I didn't really do anything to it. Um, I did notice there's a lot of play in this when it sits in, so I didn't really have to clean it out too much. I did put a little skim coat of anti-lock, but it sits on there nice, or not anti-lock, excuse me, of, uh, uh, what do you call it, anti-seize. So it just sits in there nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a few of these bolts in and should be good to go. I'm gonna use blue Loctite on them. So yeah, reverse the process. There you go. Easy peasy. I'm gonna cross, cross tighten them and torque them to what feels like, uh, hey, there goes my Diet Coke. Feels like good enough. For those that do this kind of thing, you know what I mean by good enough. Um, I've got 200,000 miles on the car and this is the first bearing job I'm doing. And with any luck, it'll be the last and only bearing job I do. For all the things that are hard to do on a car, this one's not that bad. That's what I call tight enough. One grunt. If you will, let's see. We'll put our little sensor back in. It should just slide right back in there. Nothing bad happened. It'll probably. Right in nice.
and now we'll get the brakes going. All right, next comes brake rotor. So just stick that, oh, and you gotta line the hole up. The hole for that little thing there, there we go. Put a little Loctite on the Torx nut that goes in there. My bar go. And that's tightened up. Now we'll get our caliper on. Alright, tight. Next, we'll put our brake shoes on. I've been using this disc brake quiet stuff. And I spray that on the back of the Kind of like sticky glue. And then there's a front and a back. Actually, it doesn't really matter which is front and back, but I've already had them on there front and back, so the one with the round hole is where the piston was, and the one with the flat spot is the one that goes on the front. Do not get grease, or goo, or paint, or spray on the rotor. Keep your rotor clean. Alright, so this caliper guy, I do the same thing. Spray some crap on the piston. And that slides on there nice and easy. As I say that with encouragement. Yeah. And then these little bolts we had in there earlier go in. If you're in here and the uh, these pins should be they should move. They're they they slide in and out with the with the brake shoe. They are stuck. You'll get all kinds of crazy uneven wear. There's another nut here. You can put a wrench on that. I find that just my finger is good enough to keep it from turning. And it tightens up just fine. All right. So I think that is it. Let's put the wheel on and figure out what we got. Okay, here we are. This job was not that bad. The, uh, all the parts came off and the bearing came out. The new one went right in. Got everything back together and voila, my noise is gone. I do not sound like I've got a giant Jeep with huge knobby tires, although it was kind of fun. Uh, rolling around it sounded kind of cool not the noise I expected for a bearing failure this is a 2011 Ford Taurus it's got 196,000 miles on it and all the other bearings are still original they seem to be quiet for now please like subscribe uh, share this with your friends the uh, my other videos are hiking out and about on the Appalachian Trail and other cool places. I do a little bit of sailboating and, of course, repairs on my Ford Taurus and Explorer. The older Explorer, the 2008, it is now officially dead at uh, 275,000 miles. The timing chain broke, so it has been junked. It is gone. Thanks for watching and take care.